The world was taken aback by Romanian scientists' actual flying saucer. Welcome to Amazing Truth Channel. Do not forget to subscribe and activate the bell button to receive all new. Now go to the story. On August 20th, 1944, this real-life UFO appears to be much like the classic science fiction vehicle, with the ability to do amazing feats of speed and skill. Its designers did not intend for this man-made craft to be used for interstellar travel, even if it may appear prepared for that use. The disc, dubbed an all-directions flying object, ADFO, was created by Romanian engineers Razvan Sabi and Iosif Taposu, an aerodynamicist. If his resume is any indication, the latter most certainly possesses the necessary skills for this kind of undertaking. He was the chief of theoretical aerodynamics at the National Aviation Institute before becoming a senior scientist at the National Institute for Aerospace Research in Romania. In August 2019, Sabi continued in an interview with Vice to elucidate the rationale for the ADFO. This aircraft's aerodynamics is the product of over two decades of work, meticulously explained in hundreds of pages, and verified by computer simulations and wind tunnel tests, he declared. And there's even video to support it, as we already witnessed. That same month, the Tech World account posted a video to YouTube that shows the flying saucer hovering and doing vertical takeoffs. Furthermore, the unmistakable design's inspiration comes from more organic sources than UFOs say the product's creators. Let's explore more about the past of extraterrestrial vessels on Earth before we clarify this later. It is astounding to learn that reports of UFO encounters date back to ancient Egypt. Thutmose III, a pharaoh of the 18th dynasty, is said in the Tully Papyrus transcription to have seen fiery disks floating in the heavens. After then, throughout the Roman era, at least five official sightings were documented. Airborne craft observed in the sky over Rome in 218 BC and a silvery object like a storage jar floating above what is now Turkey were among the purported UFO sightings during the Roman era. Then, from the United States to Japan, a number of recorded cases of airborne phenomena were made between the 16th and the 19th centuries. However, the allegations started to mount in the century that followed. The 1940s saw a significant increase in UFO sighting reports during World War II. During the aerial engagements of the conflict, Allied pilots reported seeing round, light objects in the area of certain airmen. Some saw burning globes, others saw red, orange, or white spheres. However, the witnesses said that they weren't simply floating there. Reports stated that the so-called Foo Fighters actually appeared to be playing with the Allied pilots. They apparently made a mad sprint, executed some crazy moves, and then just vanished. The purported UFOs, according to witnesses, seem to be intelligently directed but never aggressive. For several decades, sightings were reported as a result of these incidents. The name Flying Saucer was coined by accident in 1947 following a sighting of a UFO above Washington. While operating his private aircraft, Kenneth Arnold saw what seemed to be nine crescent-shaped objects traveling at several thousand miles per hour, like saucers skipping across the sea. The moniker originated because they were mistakenly reported as saucer-shaped in a later newspaper piece. Promptly following the Washington event occurred what is arguably the most well-known UFO sighting to date. On this occasion, however, the purported extraterrestrial aircraft was found after it had crashed. In the town of Roswell, New Mexico, the debris was discovered near a military post by a rancher named W. W. Mac Brazel. The vessel measured 600 feet in length when it was all that was left. However, would it have been a genuine UFO? The U.S. military disagreed, but the local newspaper later claimed that the debris close to the Roswell airfield was an extraterrestrial aircraft. An official statement said that the device was only a weather balloon that had fallen. It would take decades before the truth was ultimately revealed, despite the fact that images of the wreckage featured in the newspapers appear to refute that position. The United States eventually disclosed the reason for the crash 50 years after the wreckage at Roswell was found. The vessel was constructed for Project Mogul, a top-secret endeavor designed to gather intelligence on Soviet nuclear experimentation. This was accomplished by mounting microphones on high-altitude balloons that could pick up sound waves from atomic blasts. Although there was some success with Project Mogul, it was eventually shut down due to budgetary issues as well as the development of seismic detectors and air sampling techniques. 
Even after the 1947 Roswell incident was explained scientifically, the UFO controversy resurfaced due to another incident. Following another purported appearance at Roswell in the 1950s, when witnesses reported seeing bodies with metal bones and rubber skin falling from the sky, conspiracy theories regarding extraterrestrial life only grew. Had aliens really touched down in New Mexico? Some believe the purported alien remains in the New Mexico desert to be concrete evidence of alien life, and the military's prompt recovery of the remains fueled conspiracy theories about government cover-ups. This most recent instance served as more evidence of an extraterrestrial presence on Earth for those who didn't buy the 1947 Roswell wreckage explanation, but the military explained this weird phenomenon rather differently. The military clarified that the bodies were really dummies rather than extraterrestrial corpses. It was really said that their purpose was to find out if pilots could survive a plane crash. However, sightings increased despite this explanation, which did little to dampen excitement for all things alien. The American military was aware of the abundance of UFO reports, and in 1948 the Air Force started to look into the phenomenon of unexplained flying objects. However, with the Cold War still raging, the military's conception of the ship differed greatly for a considerable portion of the U.S. military at first. There was only one plausible explanation for UFO sightings, and it wasn't aliens. For them, it was obvious where the flying saucers were coming from. The Soviet Union was deploying advanced aircraft to collect intelligence on the United States. The Air Force continued its examination of the phenomenon since it was obvious that any unidentified aircraft flying in the United States was concerning. Project Sign was established in 1948 with the intention of testing the theory that the UFOs were Soviet espionage planes. Nonetheless, other scientists believed there was a good chance aliens were responsible for the flying saucers. This theory, known as the extraterrestrial hypothesis, would also be tested after that. Project Sign changed its name to Project Grudge, and Project Blue Book took up the investigation in 1952. With over two decades of duration under this new name, the probe would go on to become the longest-running official UFO investigation. The extent of the investigation demonstrated how important the matter was at the time. Project Blue Book compiled more than 12,000 reports of UFO encounters between 1952 and 1969. Following an examination, the allegations were classified as either identifiable or unidentified. Reports that might be attributed to astronomical, atmospheric, or man-made phenomena fell into the former group. However, the second category applied only to the 6% of sightings for which an explanation was not available at around the same time that Project Blue Book began operations, the U.S. government decided to begin its own investigation into UFOs. A panel comprising many physicists, a rocket scientist, and an astronomer met in 1953 to study the extraterrestrial occurrences. After that, the committee met for three days to examine the findings of Project Blue Book, speak with military experts, and see movies and photos purportedly displaying UFOs. In reality, the panel determined that around 90% of the recorded sightings could be explained with ease. They were ascribed to lights, balloons, aircraft, brilliant planets, ion clouds, and meteors, among other things. Therefore, they reasoned, there was no evidence to support the extraterrestrial hypothesis. Nevertheless, UFO fever was not much reduced by these findings. The U.S. military asked for a further government assessment in 1966 so that it could examine Project Blue Book's conclusions in more detail. On the other hand, this time the committee took two years to review its findings and dispatched 37 researchers to closely examine 59 individual encounters. Like the first panel, the committee concluded that common phenomena were the source of the UFOs notwithstanding those intriguing circumstances. As a result, they suggested against looking into it anymore. These conclusions, together with a decline in reported sightings, caused Project Blue Book to be closed in 1969. UFO investigations continued, nonetheless, even after Project Blue Book was officially shut down because private people continued to pursue the cause. Among them was J. Allen Hynek, a former committee scientist who founded the Center for UFO Studies in 1973. 
But two European experts have started constructing their own flying saucer as the Chicago-based group carries out its investigations. Although the ADFO ship seems to be a UFO, its design really comes from a far more organic source. In actuality, the round form is modeled after an airfoil, a fin on the back of a dolphin that aids in the animal's ability to glide over the water. The developers stated that this reduced the possibility of shock waves on the disc's surface and allowed the saucer to shift between supersonic speeds securely. The benefits don't end there, though. In addition to having two jet engines and four ducted fans on the bottom that propel the vehicle into the air, the ADFO is also extremely nimble. Its creators claimed that because of its special design, it is positioned to reach supersonic speeds without experiencing the typical sonic boom that comes with exceeding the speed of sound. The YouTube video claims that the ADFO may be utilized for military objectives as well. Due to its hyper-maneuverability and very low rate of signature, the narrator of the video continues, it can be used as an unmanned aerial vehicle, unmanned combat aerial vehicle, or even a fighter aircraft. Naturally, it may be the perfect vessel for espionage if it can indeed silently reach supersonic speeds. The ADFO team has also maintained that if manufacturers in the future equip it with a jet and electric hybrid propulsion system, it might become a manned craft. However, there are other scientists in Romania who are also investigating the potential military uses for this kind of aircraft. A new aircraft that the United States Navy was given a patent for in 2017 is said to be able to accomplish many of the tasks that the ADFO says it can. It can, however, also travel in space and underwater. The previous craft will also have improved stealth qualities. The patent application states that a vacuum plasma bubble or sheath will encase the aircraft. The UK Daily Metro also mentioned that it has a gas-filled hollow wall that is stimulated to vibrate by strong electromagnetic radiation. As a result, a vacuum is created around the craft, enabling it to accelerate rapidly. It's unclear, though, how any of this will actually function. The issuance of a patent does not imply that the design has been constructed and tested. You're not alone if you find all of this to be strange. In April 2019, Nick Pope, a former British government UFO investigator, told Metro that it might be challenging to draw the line between science fiction and fringe science. It's difficult to argue against it in light of more study on cloaking, warp drives, and anti-gravity techniques. Pope went on, Aeronautical engineers will still need to build something if this patent is to have any real impact, even if the theoretical physics turns out to be sound. The program must be very secret if they have developed the technologies outlined in the patents. The simple fact is that if any of this is successful, the game will definitely change. The U.S. government has attempted to construct its own UFO-style aircraft before. It may surprise you to learn that the U.S. military put into service a spacecraft modeled as a flying saucer in the 1950s with the intention of it being as commonplace as the Jeep. At the time, the idea, which would convey troops, was highly regarded by U.S. leaders. The webpage Messy Nessie stated that when engineer Bernard Lindenbaum of Air Force Dynamics Lab approached Washington to seek funds for upgrades to helicopters, he was informed that research into those aircraft would soon come to an end. The Avrocar would be the new mode of transportation used by the military in the future. British engineer Jack Frost was the visionary behind the Avrocar, which made its debut in the early 1950s. While employed by Avro Canada's Special Projects Division, Frost succeeded in persuading the United States that space travel via flying saucer was not only feasible in theory, but also feasible under his direction. Nevertheless, neither of the two boats he constructed operated exactly as they should have. By 1959, the Avro car was ready for testing, despite its teething problems. The ship was able to lift off the ground, but it was only able to do so to a height of around three feet, which is not a good height for a flying vehicle. Its peak speed was limited to 35 miles per hour, and its pilots reported that the cockpit temperature was also intolerably high. However, the issues didn't stop there since the Avro car also made a horrifying screeching noise when it was in use. Subsequently, the project's financing was discontinued in 1961, and it was eventually forgotten. The second aircraft was reportedly placed in storage by the military in 2002, 
while one ended up in the Cold War Gallery in the National Museum of the United States Air Force. As a result, flying saucer-style aircraft is still an evolving field. However, Sabi, one of the engineers behind the ADFO project in Romania, told Wired magazine that their prototype is only the tip of the iceberg, expressing their optimism about it. He continued by saying that the technology has garnered interest from two government agencies, venture capital firms, a major aircraft manufacturer, and at least 10 potential partners. It remains to be seen, though, who will be the first to publicly demonstrate fully operational UFO-style planes, with the U.S. military trailing closely after with its own comparable aircraft. If you like the story, surely the next video that's appearing on your screen will move you, too. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up, and activate the notification bell so you won't miss any of our next videos. A huge kiss, and see you in the next story.